Hi, I'm Holly Howitt with Beacon Community Connections here with another mental health digital short. This week, we're talking about anxiety and in particular, anxieties that families may be facing with the return to school. So I'm here with Dr. Paul Freeberg with the Freeberg Psychology Practice. Paul has been a psychologist for many years. In fact, he served as a consultant to the Lafayette Parish School System as a school psychologist for about 25 years. And so we're very glad to have him and his expertise with us today. Before I turn it over to Paul, I do wanna thank NAMI Acadiana, the National Alliance on Mental Illness for supporting this mental health digital short. You know, when we, when we hear about anxiety, we, we know that everybody has uh, certain things that they're nervous about, certain things that they have difficulties with. So um, people may be nervous about um, crowds, they may be nervous about uh, tests in school, they might be nervous about uh, dogs or other things like that. You know, usually when we talk about anxiety, um, we're talking about something that's much more pervasive and, and, and kind of goes across a longer period of time and goes across a lot of different situations. So. People that have anxiety may start out with one thing that they're nervous about, but then over time it becomes more and more and it really starts to impact um, either their job, um, their social relationships, um, schooling, um, and it becomes to where it is something that needs treatment. So anxiety in adults um, versus how it looks in kids, um, there is some overlap between the two. Um, you know, the feeling of anxiousness is something that will be in adults and kids, as well as sometimes when anxiety gets to a certain point and you get to the point of a panic or panic attack, um, that can happen in adults and kids as well. And also, um, disturbance in sleep can come with adults and kids often as well uh, what's what's harder with younger kids is really getting them to be able to verbalize about the anxiety and so um, a lot of times you're looking at kind of behavioral observations in children so um, you know do they report stomach aches headaches those kinds of things um, do they report having difficulty sleeping uh, most of the times when i have kids that have difficulty sleeping Usually you ask them, you know, what are you thinking about before you go to sleep? And usually you hear a lot of kinds of worries and fears and anxieties. And so, you know, that's the situation where it starts to keep them up at night. So, you know, with adults, you can have a better conversation about um, anxiety. You can kind of find out what they're thinking about, their thought process is better. And you can also do that with older kids, teenagers and things like that. So, um, you know, there's definitely some overlap and there are some differences between those things. So as far as treatments go with uh, adults, um, you know, starting with simple things like deep breaths, um, relaxation uh, exercise is very good for anxiety, so being active can reduce anxiety, um, meditation, uh, yoga. You know, for, for people that have um, more significant anxiety, you know, usually a counselor, a therapist, or somebody, um, and also medication is good for people that have real severe anxiety. Um, when it comes to, you know, therapy, most of it is kind of cognitive behavioral therapy. And so with cognitive behavioral therapy, what you're trying to do is, is have people kind of think about things differently. So, you know, you're not trying to change the reality of their world, you're just trying to get them to think about things in a different way. So. For instance, in the situation that we're having now with COVID-19, um, you know, one person may see it as um, this is a very contagious thing. 140,000 people have died. Um, you know, I'm probably going to get it because it's very contagious, and it's going to somebody in my family is going to die. And you know, other people may say, you know, this is something that um, you know a lot of people get. Most people are fine with. Um, you know maybe 10, 15, 20% of the people get it, so 80% aren't gonna get it. Um, so they're gonna look at things in a very different way. And so, you know, part of that is trying to get uh, people to think about a, a similar situation, but think about it differently. So you're not really changing the reality of things, you're just changing about how you, how you look at it. Kind of like an optimist and a pessimist look at things differently. Um, so it gives you different perspective. 
Yeah, so when it comes to kids' anxiety, um, again, you know, with younger kids, uh, the things are going to be different than dealing kind of with older kids. And, you know, it usually starts with um, kind of from, from parents on down. And so, you know, again, when we're dealing with the COVID situation now, um, you know, if parents are managing uh, their stressors and their anxieties right now, uh, usually the kids have been doing pretty well. You know, we had uh, the shutdown at the beginning, at the, at the end of the spring, and most of the kids that I saw who, who even had pre-existing anxiety seemed to be doing pretty well with the shutdown. And so, um, but, you know, their parents seemed to take more of the kind of brunt of the extra stress. So, you know, it was kind of almost like an early summer. Kids went home, um, and for a while it was, you know, for, for a lot of kids, their anxiety comes from school, and so they didn't have school. And so they just seem to even do better. And, you know, as long as parents kind of protected them from kind of the worst case scenario thinking about what's happening, uh, they seem to do well. Um, you know, as far as, um, you know, older kids, you can, you can do cognitive behavior therapy with. You can, you can talk to them about, um, you know, how to think about things differently. You know, you, you definitely can have a real therapeutic relationship. Um, you know, as far as younger kids go, you know, you've got to try to have, you know, real open communication with them to know what they're thinking about and what they're worrying about. Obviously, the more verbal a young child is, you know, the better you're going to do. But they're, they're not really at an age where they can kind of think about how they think, which is required with kind of cognitive behavior therapy, which is that you're thinking about how you think. And so, you know, uh, young kids, um, you know, I always ask young kids and, and, you know, the kids that I see as part of my initial conversations, you know, what, what are things that you worry about? And, and I think that's a, a good thing for parents to ask in general, you know, or, or you know, because we all worry about things. I worry about things. And so when children in an interview will say, you know, uh, nothing, I say, well, you know, we all worry about things. You know, I worry about this. I'm sure your parents worry about something, you know, and typical worries for kids would be about, you know, um, you know, their parents or school or friends or things like that. Um, so trying to keep that open communication with young children uh, is good, um, you know, and when, when they say they're worried about something, it's, it's not a good thing to say, well, don't worry about that. You know, that, that kind of negates what their, what their concerns are. And you want to let them have what those concerns are. You know, I have a lot of kids who, you know, express worrying about somebody breaking into their house and, you know. I've, I've always asked, has someone broken into your house before? And I've never got an answer of yes. So, you know, kids will worry about things that, um, that aren't necessarily something that's highly likely to happen. And so um, that's something that you, that, you know, is very important for their parents to be aware of. And so, you know, with young kids trying to keep that open line of communication so that you understand what it is they're thinking about, um, if they're worried about somebody breaking into their house, for example, then you go through and talk about how you lock the doors and what you do. And if they're worried about a fire in the house, you talk about your fire plan and fire extinguishers and how things go. Um, but you, you're trying to kind of let them know that, that you know, it's going to be fine. You know, things are going to be OK. Just just like with the COVID-19, you know, I think that most of the message that you, you want to give to kids is that, you know, we're going to work this out. This is going to be OK. Um, you know, I know there are exceptions to those rules, but you're going to have to deal with those when, if they come up. You know, parents are asking me, um, you know, should I send my child to school? Should I stay at home? Um, I do have a number of kids who have some pre-existing conditions, um, and, and they have a lot of anxiety about it. I mean, the parents do. Um, sometimes the kids do, sometimes the kids don't. And I think that those are, um, you know, those are family-based decisions, you know. It has to do with whether you've got um, the resources to, to be at home and to do online schooling uh, or you don't. Um, I think if you want consistency, if you want it to be consistent for the year, then you need to start off online because you'll be able to access online schooling throughout the year. Um, if you're okay with, you know, getting what you can from the teacher in person and then going online, then that that's that's okay if you ch think your child is kind of flexible enough to do that but you know if your child is the type that that needs to know kind of what's coming and doesn't like surprises and and you know it may be better if you have the the resources to to be online to start
you know, what, what, you're, what you really want ideally is for kids to have consistency and uh, know what to expect. And, you know, this is probably the first time, you know, that I've known of a school year where the masses do not know what to expect and there's really not going to be consistency. So my expectations is, you know, that schools are going to start in person, they're going to be taken on to online, they're going to be back and forth during the school year. And so it's almost like, you know, trying to, I've told parents and I've told kids, um, expect that this is going to kind of be on again, off again, as far as in-person school. And, um, you know, I, they can do fine in either, in a, either situation. Um, you know, when, when we talk about anxiety, you know, there are things that are within our control and things that are not within our control. And so it's important to identify those for kids and for adults, which is, you know, so, for instance, if a child says, I'm anxious about school, I'm anxious about tests, um, you know, I really get super nervous about tests, you know, is there anything that you can do to make yourself less nervous? Yeah, there's some things that you can do. You can study. If you study, you'll feel better about the material. You'll be less anxious. You know, I use the expression, if you know it backwards and forwards, so somebody's quizzed you and you could answer it no matter how it's asked, you will be much less anxious than if you kind of barely know the information. So. The same thing is true when it comes to, um, you know, mask wearing and things like that. You know, I think that, that people should be practicing wearing masks. And so, we, you know, we've got a mandate in the state. And so kids should be practicing anyway. But, but that's one of those three things, I think, where, you know, these are things within our control that you get to control about, you know, the COVID, um, whether it's going to affect you or not. You know, we can do social distancing. We can wear masks. Um, and we can wash our hands a lot and be in and show good hygiene. And if we can do those things, um, those are those are the things within your control. So, you know, if people worry that they're going to get COVID when they go to school, and I realize that's a, a legitimate concern. Um, well, what are the things that you can do to reduce the chances of that A, B and C? And so, you know, let's let's all try and do those A, B's and C's. I know there I know there are going to be situations where one kid says, hey, you're not wearing your mask right. And there may be some tension about that because, you know, if everyone's not doing it, then this isn't going to work as well. And so, you know, the school system's going to have to figure out kind of how they're going to deal with those kinds of things. Um, but those are things, again, within your control. We, we can't control, uh, the kids can't, and the parents can't control when we're going to have a vaccine. They can't control the treatments for COVID, but they can control how much um, that they can control. And, and that's important for people to recognize in any situation that creates anxiety, you know, what's within my control and what's out of my control. And I've got to kind of let that go and, I, and you know, try to do the things I have some control over.